Hello everyone, uh, Kay Kim here uh, with the Traders Club, to tradersclub.com. Thanks for tuning in uh, to uh, my weekend weekly video, the market update. Um, today is June 23rd, 2017, Friday. Uh, I'm recording this uh, late afternoon. Market should be open another hour and a half. So uh, just to let you know that the uh, market should be open another hour and a half as I record this. Uh, so that's why you will see some flashing lights here. Uh, looking at Spider, today we're going to be looking at Spider, uh, Russell, Banks. I'm going to look at Apple and uh, look at gold and silver, and we'll call it a night. Looking at Spider here, let me do a little bit of a maintenance here. So we got a little bit of gap that's still open. So looking at Spider, we've been talking about this level here, right? This is a prior resistance level that is acting as new support so we're still holding that level currently we're looking uh looking like we're just kind of moving sideways here um if you right now if this thing as long as, as far as a candlestick analysis is concerned if this thing closes the day with more of a stronger bullish candle that potentially be a um morning star reversal in the minor term so we let's say if i do something like that that will be a red candle we got an invert hammer and if we see more firmer green candle okay if we close with that wick then it could possibly some kind of a bear flag be bear flag before lower so uh, i don't like doing these micro term analysis because it, it could just, things can just change by gapping it up on Monday or gapping it down Monday morning. So I wouldn't put too much weight on it. But looking at things more of an intermediate term perspective, obviously we're still in an uptrend. We got higher lows and higher highs. And so uptrend is healthy. Primary term is healthy. In the minor term, we are still kind of grinding. We're still in this consolidation panel. We're still holding above this rising uh, pivot there. So if we do lose that level to the downside, I am open-minded, which I've been talking about quite some time now for this to come back down to about 240. Doesn't mean that if we lose this level, this is time to panic. I guess if you're a short-term trader, then you know you, you start closing all your positions. For somebody like me, who will hold things much longer time frame uh, I'm not going to be freaking out when it pulls back I'm gonna be uh, you know seeing if we can see about 240 239 we're residing with that 50, 50 MA is residing if see we can can see those levels to become a potential support and possibly look for opportunity to add more so minor term you know it's just kind of Neutral, I think, at this point, but in the intermediate term and primary term, we're still in a bullish perspective. Also, we talked about my last video that uh, you know when there's a gap, things always get haptic, and that's why we we saw hammer, and then we saw that gap up early this week, and we actually saw very very strong follow through. You see that, and so this is technically this is a textbook technical reversal right here, right? You saw that you said that you said resistance level. We saw hammer, and then you saw the gap up, possibly a breakaway gap, and you saw strong close. That's a textbook micro term reversal playing out perfectly, right? And a lot of people chase that, thinking that we're gonna get to 247, 246 right away, right? And print all another all time high. But that's the thing about it is, it's a minor term. Not a shenanigan is gonna happen, and we just fill this gap. Like I said again last week, I there will be turbulence. You can go back and check what I said, and then that's why I didn't tweet anything out on this day. That oh my god, looks bullish. We're above 20 MA. It looks like we're going to go 247. I didn't tweet anything out. I didn't say anything to my members. I just thought I want to see what happens next day. And the next day, boom, we gap down. It just flushes everybody out and I at the time I just kind of chuckled and said I knew it I knew it this is what it does this is why I, I don't want to uh, analyze so close I don't want to micromanage you guys know what I'm talking about I don't want to know what's gonna happen tomorrow I don't care because it just could be just volatile like this what I really care about what's gonna happen next several months what I really care about is what is the intermediate term trend look like what is the primary term trend look like in the minor term well we're still kind of range bound and I 
Do you really care what's going to happen Monday? I guess a lot of short-term traders do. I really don't. That's why I say I'm open-minded for this thing to come down to 240. But either way, I mean, if this thing continues higher, that's good. Because I am holding a lot of long positions. But if it pulls back a little bit, hey, I, you know, that's that's what you have to go through. I went through, I went through this pullback, right? I went through this pullback, and I talked about how this is a level of, you know, this is a level. I threw a Fibonacci here. There's a 50% retracement, 50 or 61.8%. Uh, this is a level coinciding with that 50% retrace or 50%, not 50%. 50 EMA, exponential moving average, this is the level that 50 EMA is residing, right? This is, we found support in here, so there was a potential level of support. So if this thing comes down, well, this is a prior strong support, you see that, right? This is a prior resistance, strong support. This was a pivotal level here back in May 15th. This is a pivotal level back in March 1st. And this is a level precisely where the 50% I keep saying 50%, 50 EMA is residing. That vicinity, if I actually threw a little bit of Fibonacci, I'm sure that's a 50, you see, aha, uh -huh. you also see that 50% retracement is also residing. So you can see that that's a strong level of support. Should the price decline next week and loses this rising pivot we've been talking about and the 20 EMA, then it's the prior resistance around 240-239 is a prior pivot, it is the 50% retracement, and it's the level where 50 EMA, that 50 exponential moving average, is residing. So that's a level that I see that there will be a strong support. Should we, sh should the price continues to, kind of continue to decline next week. However, if we found to find support here, and we throw maybe a morning star reversal that for that to happen, for that to confirm, what we need to see is we need to see this thing moving higher, breaking above prior resistance, right? Which is 243.41. But again, there's a gap that was not filled. This gap was not fully filled. You see that this was a this was when the market closed, and then we gap down here. So there's a gap. So when every time there's a gap, things can get hectic, just like this gap was filled and things did get hectic. So you can move higher uh, and then fill it, or if you don't fill it, we just hang around a little bit, maybe up and down. I think best scenario would be they just gap it up, like, like it will get up and then just gaps it up and then move higher. I think then, I think that would be catalyst for this market to continue to about 247. And, and I wrote an article back here, back in early May or mid-May, that my target is 247 on Spider and 250 in the intermediate term, and I anticipate fluctuations and you know short-term corrections here and there. So that's kind of what I see, intermediate term bullish, primary term bullish, minor term, neutral, too bullish, now they were still holding this level. Once we break below that level, I will categorize this market as bearish in the minor term, neutral to bearish or bearish in the minor term. So that's the level to important level to watch. I'm going to actually um, edit my 20MA setting back close. I just want to kind of accommodate these last few weeks of price level where it did find some support there. So that's where we'll look at that. We'll see what happens next week and then we will revisit and see what happens, right? Let's go to IWM Russell 2000 ETF. Uh, this is a level that I've been talking about. I've been uh, updating you guys with my journal. Uh, you can see we have a little bit of bull flagging pattern. These are two levels. Uh, Two levels bulls want to protect, right? I, I think last video I talked about the difference between this, uh, you know, mid May to uh, early June move. How this move is different than these two moves. I explained that last week's video. You can listen to that if you want to know more about that. So I think what we want to see now is that we want to see 239 holding. We're breaking. We're attempting to break out this potentially a bull flag pattern. Uh, what is that? Is there? There's a little bit of gap. This gap here, kind of like, kind of like spider. Again, that that gap right there got filled, and then what happened? Things got hectic. So we're very near that gap. So it's a much smaller gap, though. It's not as big as this. So possibly you could just kind of ignore it and just continue to move higher. So we'll see how it plays out. But 
if we do lose this level 239, 139, we do have a little more bit more cushion. Uh, 138 is a prior resistance support, and also the level have that 50 MA residing in that vicinity. So you can see right there. So if we do lose this level, that's the level to hold. We this is a must hold level, about 138 ish. What you don't want to see if you're a buyer on the Russell 2000, you don't want to see coming all the way back down to the channel because if it does come back down to the channel support, then now we're just just up and down shenanigan, right? We're just still in this rising channel with this six, seven month range we've been in since early, late December, right? So for this sentiment to change, we need to cultivate that higher low and then break above it, right? Break above it, retest it, and then move. And then if we can do that, then I think we can get to 155, 160. So, so far so good here. Uh, we have 20 MA holding. 20 MA is holding here. We're bouncing there. We have a little bit of a tweezer bottom yesterday. You can see that there, right there. There's a tweezer left. Uh, the red candle, similar size green candle. And then we're seeing follow through of that today. Let's see if we can get above. It really needs to get above 140, 135 for it to get back up to that back to that uh rising pivot or the channel really channel top of the channel resistance and uh, we'll go from there and we'll, we'll follow up next week and see how we played out financial sector and we talked about this last week's video where this was a bull flagging pattern and i also talked to you guys about how you know it could break either either direction it could break to the upside it could break to the downside right we initially kind of broke out to the upside we gapped up kind of you know trapped a lot of sh longs here and then it just reversed you know <laughs> kind of love this market how this market just know how to do it right just just everybody's anticipating this breakout and maybe continuation move and it said no and just just flushing everybody out. When I say everybody, I mean the short-term traders and day traders and swing traders, right? So they start panicking and start coming down and then just their stops are getting taken up. But I, if you remember, I am, I was open-minded for this pullback to retest this neckline. This is what you call neckline, right? You got the left shoulder, head, right shoulder. This is the inverted head and shoulders pattern, right? We initially broke above it by getting above the neckline and then what happens is sometimes it continues to move higher but more often than not what it will do is a pull back retest the neckline and then it breaks out to new highs that's what I call a full confirmation of this inverted and shoulders this is the initial confirmation it comes back and retest and then the full confirmation so if I actually do a little bit of you see the gap so that gap is pretty much getting filled today. I think this is gonna be active strong support here. We got 50 MA, 100 SMA in that vicinity. If I actually do also a little bit of FIB, you can see that this is a level 50% is residing. So you can see not only we have a 50% retracement in that vicinity, we have 100 SMA, two, uh, 50 MA, and prior resistance, prior neckline. Uh, support. So this is a strong level of support. Also, is this which is a neckline of this inverted head and shoulders. So I think uh, I think this is gonna be a strong support. Uh, I won't be surprised if this thing comes down a little bit lower just to fake a lot of people out before bouncing back up. But I think there's a good uh, just the price action that we've seen, we got the higher high here. We are in an uptrend, right? We got this uptrend development going here. So I think this is somewhere here in that vicinity uh, is gonna provide some strong support. So let's see how it plays out next week and uh, we'll, we'll follow up. Let's look at Apple here. Apple uh, retesting that 50 MA, 20 MA is declining. You can see 20 MA has, 20 MA has been acting as support here and all around here. And then 20 MA is declining. Uh, this gap remains open. So I'll say this again, the, as long as this gap remains open, things can get hectic for the buyers. Um, even if this gap gets filled, we, we saw what happened in Spider. Spider gap got filled, same with the Russell 2000, and then next day it just completely reversed, right? So something like that could happen. So I think below this gap, 
uh, I continue to forecast that there will be some kind of turbulence and some kind of a shenanigan that could possibly happen. Currently, though, that 50 MA is acting as short-term resistance. If we don't get above, I say, uh, above here, you know, let me actually draw the, draw the line. Right here. 150. 150 level. I drew a little bit above the... Um, gap because he could overshoot fill the gap and then just next day just do something like that so uh, i think for minor term trend to change back to bullish it will probably need to kind of gap back above 150 33 it's not gonna go straight up i don't think i think it's gonna go up and possibly retest but in the retest space we want to see a cultivation of higher low otherwise it could be kind of another uh, resistance like here, 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 and then fall over. So in that vicinity, things could be happy. I, I mean, unless you're a short-term trend day trader, this I don't think this is a level that I'm thinking about. Uh, you know, possibly engaging at this point. Uh, you know, I monthly chart is starting to look a little bit more. We got a little bit. Of, I'm just looking at my other screens. Monthly chart we got here. Let me let me show you something. So this is monthly. Um, we got a little bit of a tweezer top, right? But we've had tweezer top before, right there, right? So just because we have tweezer top does not mean that it's gonna do that. But let's say if this thing do decide to break below this level, I think then things can get hectic. I don't see this thing coming all the way down though. I don't see Apple coming all the way. I think there's some people thinking it's gonna come all the way down. I don't see it happening. I think uh, worst case scenario, we come down to about one, I think this will be worst case there, 126, 128-ish level uh, will be worst case scenario. Uh, currently though, the 100 SMA is acting as support, so we got, so 100 SMA is acting as support, 50 MA acting as resistance, so that's two level to watch. We got a little bit of a pennant pattern there, potentially a bear pennant or bear flag pattern. So like I said, below the falling, declining 20 MA, it's gonna get hectic. So unless you're a very short-term trader, I this is a level to kind of let things, you know, let things kind of soar out before we see uh, any kind of a res resolution on Apple. I personally think there's a possibility we come back down to about 134, 133 level to retest. Uh, you know, if if we start to kind of fizzle around here a little bit, then it's gonna start to look a lot like uh, something like that you know if that happens then uh, there could be much more selling but again it's still kind of in this development phase we don't know exactly how it's gonna play out uh, just keep in mind that back in 2012 uh, we threw that little bit of kind of a innocent head and shoulders that kind of ruined everything for Apple you see that this is a very very innocent head and shoulder right there you can see this again this is a 2012 October we got a left shoulder head Kind of a right shoulder declining 20 ma uh you know it's kind of similar thing happened right here you see you see this gap that gap got filled he overshot it and then next day just start tanking right and this was kind of a breakaway gap to the downside it was a little bit of island reversal too we got gap up gap down with a head and shoulder formation if you go back to 2012 chart there's a weekly bear subvergence monthly divergence there's a monthly evening star this was this was when i was extremely bearish on apple you can check my article 10 reasons of why i'm extremely bearish on apple back in 2012 and i don't see it it's gonna be like that into the, like 2012 because uh, I don't see weekly bear divergence, I don't see monthly evening so I don't see island reversal, none of that. But what I see is we see potentially this head and shoulder formation. If this thing does play out like that, there's if that does play out, if this head and shoulder does play out on Apple, there's a good chance it will come back down to about 134, 133. If not, it could come back down on fizzle, never confirmed. Remember what happened next financial sector, it never confirmed and made a move to the upside. I'll show you that one more time. And I talked about this a lot. See, this is a bank's left shoulder head. It never fully confirmed. And then what happened was it threw inverted head and shoulder instead, and then it broke out to the upside and cultivate a higher high, completely nullifying that inverted head and shoulder. We are in the nullification process in the XLF head and shoulder formation. Now we are in the retest phase of this inverted head and shoulder instead, and then we find support before going higher. So uh, 
these are things to watch on this head and shoulder formation. There's so much more to look after on this potentially head and shoulder formation and see if this is gonna actually become a head and shoulder or are we gonna maybe new low and then become an inverted head and shoulder instead, right? So these are the things to watch out to develop next couple weeks, maybe a month or so. Um, and uh, we'll, I'll keep track it and see how it plays out. Uh, I'll end the video with gold, silver, and GDX quickly. I don't, just still no man's land, still just doing nothing here. Just a lot of up and downs, I think. Mostly a lot of short term trades. We got potentially something on the monthly chart, but still, I still need to get above 124.54 for me to get involved for a major primary term reversal. We're not in a major primary term reversal yet. This needs to get above 124.54. We do have uh, higher lows and we got kind of a higher highs. So I think there's potentially be something if we can able to march higher and cultivate new highs. Let's see how that plays out in the next several weeks. Silver though looking much, much weaker because silver is cultivating lower high, different than gold and lower low. And we talked about this potentially inverted head and shoulder. That pattern has been uh, pretty much nullified at this point. Now things are, you know, because I thought this would be left shoulder head, right shoulder on the inverted head and shoulders. Well, now it looks like a left shoulder. Now it looks like left shoulder head and right shoulder, you know, just just ugly, you know, looking. Maybe even this is head, left shoulder, and this is head, and this is right shoulder, and this is a neckline. Just looking very choppy. I don't want to be part of this until I'll start to consider if it gets above 1783. It wouldn't get me interested at all at this point. Again, I'm looking at things from a much longer term perspective. You want to trade this for a short, quick bounce? I mean, that's your. That's your thing. But I'm, I'm looking at, I'm talking to investors. I'm talking to long-term traders that you're looking to profit from silver for the next big move like this. Not ready, not ready. Last one, I'll let you guys go with this, GDX. I actually, let's talk, let me talk IBB, uh, uh, let, me, let me talk about the uh, biotech because I think that sword. Uh, G, GDX is just, we still have that formation of this inverted head and shoulders, right? You can see uh, you got the left shoulder head. So we got a little bit of that, but we got a little bit of downtrend. And you just lower highs. It's just hectic. It's just, I don't want to be part of it here. I would, again, we still way, way below primary term downtrend resistance. Uh, as you can see here, th th you need to see this in getting well above that. So for me to get excited, to profit from something like that kind of move, to invest in GDX and gold and silver, to uh, get into some long-term position trading, I want to see GDX getting above 28.69. But first things first, it needs to get about 25.55, and then something like that. Let me look at IBB, and then we'll call it a night. Uh, IBB here, fill this gap. That's a good sign. We finally broke out. We feel that gap acting as resistance now. Uh, I think if we can able to, if this thing continues to move higher, possibly, I don't know. What I like to see is this thing coming down, retesting some of these levels. I think then that will be a great level to look for a strong support and finally this thing uh, reversing. We're seeing maybe finally, finally seeing a major reversal pattern uh, before getting back into an uptrend. See, what I'm really interested in is catching a move, uh, you know, catching a move like that, like we're reversing here and catching a move like that, catching a move like that, right? What I'm not interested in is catching just few days of pop. I mean, that's, Okay, do you do you really think how many people do you think trying to catch that and then got burned, got burned, got burned, got burned? How many times do you think people got burned trying to catch something like that? People who really truly profiting from this move is possibly people who've been buying these dip right here, maybe here, and then who've been holding it patiently. And then as this thing pops, they start to you know close some positions out, try to uh, take some profit. You know what I'm saying? So. Uh, let's see if we can see this thing pulling back, maybe 300, 302, maybe when this rising pivot, some of these levels and retested it before 
because we got we got accumulate we got this cultivation of higher highs now we got higher lows it's before we start to resume back up to primary term uptrend well thanks for uh, watching have a great weekend and good luck trading next week